the wizard player is the dungeon master's girlfriend, and she is considering leaving this game. This game is such a crap show that the dungeon master's own girlfriend is about to nope out and leave. That's what a crap show this game is. Are you a dungeon master looking for 5th edition adventures and other pre-made resources you can use in your D&D game? If so, Layer Magazine has exactly what you need. Each monthly issue of Layer Magazine contains two 5th edition adventures complete with maps for use on virtual tabletops, plus a plethora of other GM resources. New monsters, puzzles, traps, magic items, NPCs, and more. DM Layer patrons receive a new issue of Layer Magazine every month and also get bonus content such as map packs and additional 5e adventures. Reduce your prep time and improve your games with Lair Magazine. Become a DM Lair patron today. Am I the butthead for not wanting my character's faith to be changed by another player? <gasps> no, I feel like that is a line. That's a line that you don't cross, but it shouldn't be crossable. Like there should be no way for somebody to change the faith of your own character. Like, you are in control of your character. You decide what your character believes and what they don't believe. There, it should not be possible for someone to change their faith. That is just that a, a hot take of, it shouldn't even be possible. And a game master worth their salt should shut that crap down immediately and be like, no, 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 no. What their character believes is within the agency of the player to determine, and you, other player, cannot affect that at all, at all. So I feel like that should just be off the table and the game master should have shut that crap down immediately. But let's read the story because I'm jumping to conclusions maybe. This is my second experience playing D&D. &D. Oh gosh. It's your second time playing D&D &D and you got screwed. Ugh, ugh. I feel bad for people who like join a game and they're like excited you know, they're just starting to play and then they have a bad experience. I hate that crap because it sours them potentially to the entire game when it's just a bad group or something, you know? Okay, second experience playing d d which ended very quickly and very sadly. My first experience was trying to run a campaign as a DM among friends, which also ended very quickly and very sadly due to family drama, but that's a separate story. Yeah, yeah, but that happens, dude. That is probably a common story drama in groups and sometimes family drama can 100% spell doom to campaigns. So I'd like to see that story. You post that story up for us, dude. And I'll react to that. <laughs> I've had some family drama, not with my family, but with other people's families, and it can get rich. So one of the players from that failed campaign wanted to run the campaign himself, but in a smaller circle of friends. And what happened, I will tell you now. My friend and DM, DM, his girlfriend, wizard. Oh, 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 hold on a second. So your friend and the dungeon master is the dungeon master. Got it. His girlfriend is a wizard. So the dungeon master's girlfriend is a wizard. Okay. Another friend is a cleric and you're a warrior. So you have a, you have a wizard, a cleric, and a warrior. And then the dungeon master and the girlfriend, the dungeon master's girlfriend is the, is a wizard. I have a feeling that that's, there's, I'm just gonna, my crystal ball here, I'm gonna guess that there's some, in this story, there might be some favoritism here because like, I'm just gonna crystal ball it here. We'll see. First of all, I'll give you a little backstory of my character as it's important to the plot. I decided not to be very original and created a warrior character, but he was a dude, it, like, there, yeah, there is no originality in the game. Like every everything under the sun has been done. So I wouldn't, I would not sweat about not being original. You just make something that you enjoy playing. And if somebody else has done it, who cares? And if you got it off a Reddit post or some YouTube video and you think it's cool, then do it. Like, it doesn't matter if it's original or not. Like you're not, you're not gonna score any points or lose points in originality, at least not in my games. I just want you to have fun. But anyway, anyway, my, my point is that don't worry about it being original, who cares? Like. People should not care. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. And created a warrior character, but he was a tiefling and came from a family that was famous for their paladins, who were fanatically devoted to the local good deity. Yeah, that's a little bit of a, oh, it's a tiefling, which is evil, a descendant of devils and stuff, but oh, we're devoted to a, a fanatically good good deity. Uh, okay. I feel like that, now that's probably, 
troped cliched or something i don't know it's just kind of like it's what you it's what you expect nowadays you expect somebody to play a traditionally evil race but have them be a paladin devoted to good you like you expect them to do that you know it might have been novel back a while ago but it no longer is which doesn't really matter i mean it doesn't ultimately it still doesn't matter it doesn't matter um <laughs> Uh, but my character was not accepted as a paladin because he was born a tiefling. Oh, and here we go. So, okay. We're playing, we're, we're definitely playing into some probably overused narrative story mechanics at this point. But again, it's, it's okay. It doesn't matter. It's your character. You do what you want. Anyway, my character's goal, as I conceived it, would be to follow. My backstories and my characters are probably equally, like, not interesting, to be frank with you. Like, I'm, I'm kind of being, a, I'm kind of, like, being a jerk to his backstory, but... My backstories are probably worse because I don't, yeah, they're probably worse. So I should probably not comment on his backstory and just let him, because <laughs> mine are worse, I guarantee you. Let's just keep going then. Anyway, my character's goal, as I conceived it, would be to follow the teachings of this goddess to prove himself worthy of becoming a paladin. All right, makes sense. I'm with you. The beginning of the company was supposed to be standard, all of us meeting at a tavern, etc. My character was sitting quietly in the tavern drinking a beer when Cleric entered the tavern. Cleric, having the warrior roll the dice. Have the warrior roll the dice, laughter. DM, roll the dice for constitution. I don't know what we're talking about. Me, passing the check. What are we rolling uh, the dice for? You've lost me already, dude. You, you already lost me on your story. I don't know what you're rolling dice for. DM, nothing happens, but you notice an obscure hunched figure in a hoodie approaching a bar near you. A hoodie? Really? We got people in hoodies? You're like, this is a fantasy game, right? And we have hoodies. Okay. Uh, can I get a good look at him? Have him roll the, the cleric says, have him roll the dice. Wait a second. Wait a second. So the cleric is telling the game master how to run the game and when to make other people roll dice? That seems weird. Like, what the heck's going on there? Is this cleric doing some weird shenanigan-y crap? Like, or is, or to have the have the game master and the cleric done some like behind the screen plannings and tomfoolery or something? I wonder what the heck's going on here. Have him roll the dice. Roll dice for intelligence and constitution. I rolled the dice. You don't know what this creature is, but it remotely reminds you of a mushroom. The wizard joins us. And we have a few words with her, which are once again interrupted by the cleric's request to roll the constitution check. It should be noted that the wizard was not an easy one. She was one of those whose favorite spell was fist, and she walked everywhere with a staff on the weight, more like a barbell. So after finishing her dialogue with me, the wizard stuck her staff barbell into the floor, to which the cleric reacted, repent. Wizard, what? Cleric, repent. Wizard, so the cleric is like, repent. Wizard, nah, I'm leaving this asylum. After that, the cleric decided to attack the wizard with his whip. The cleric decided to attack the wizard. What are you doing? You just started and you have PVP already. This is stupid. This is one of the, of course you have a stupid game already. This is so stupid. Like we've just begun a game. The characters are meeting in a tavern and you already have stupid crap going on. Are we 15 years old? What are we? Are we 12? Oh my gosh. This this sounds like 12 year olds playing the game. Ugh. I'm sorry if I'm offending any 12 year olds who are actually mature, but this is already, already we're starting off with stupid crap that doesn't make any sense and PVP and the cleric and the DM have some sort of like behind the screen shenanigans going on that the other players aren't aware of and stuff. Like, oh my goodness. Okay, so after that, the cleric decided to attack the wizard with his whip. Before that, there was a small argument between the DM and the cleric about whether the super unusual whip should do stabbing or crushing damage. It would be really hard to get a whip to do piercing damage or stabbing damage and crushing. Like, the whip would have to be super heavy and then it wouldn't be a whip, it would be like a flail. So that doesn't make any sense at all. That, that argument, that discussion right there is completely nonsensical. I think we have 12 year olds playing the game. I really do. I, except that this person writes really well for a 12 year old, like he's got pretty decent punctuation and grammar and stuff. Like, I mean, he's missing a comma before the quoted text right here. But other than that, there's pretty good grammar and punctuation. I don't think 12 year olds write this well. So I, I think we have adults. What are we doing here? What are we doing? 
I, who sensed that the company was going the wrong way, intercepted his intercepted his arm and prevented him from striking. Okay, so you stopped the cleric from striking the wizard. So you're smart. You're like, this is dumb. We should not do this. We're supposed to work together. There's thousands of bad guys in the world that we could attack. Why are we attacking each other? Much less on the very first game session. So you have a little bit of sense in you. Okay, that's cool. Intercepted his arm and prevented him from striking. Then also blocked the wizard's attack on the cleric to prevent a fight. In the end, she left the madhouse. The cleric shouted, how dare you raise your hand against a holy man? and announced that he was releasing a cloud of spores. The cleric is just, the cleric needs to be kicked out of this game. Click the, kick the cleric out of the game. This cleric is a turd. The cleric is a turd. Who is the cleric? The cleric is just another friend. He's a turd, kick him out of the game. He's ruining the game for everybody. And the game master is complicit with it. So maybe the game master is an idiot too. Oh, this is so stupid. This is, these are the types of games that you hear about. And like, if you're, if you have like good fortune, you, you're never in these types of ridiculous juvenile games. Uh, and it probably makes 12 year olds like look good. Okay, in the end, she left the madhouse. The cleric shouted, how dare you raise your hand against a holy man and announced that he was releasing a cloud of spores. The DM asked me again to make, to take a constitution check, which I passed. But at couple, yeah, there's pretty good grammar and punctuation here. This person knows how to write. There's a few mistakes, but they're they're definitely fairly well educated to be able to write this well. Uh, their writing is becoming a lost art. So this person is fairly well educated. But a couple of visitors to the place who had fallen under his control did not. So now the cleric is killing innocents in the tavern, basically. I should say by this point, the wizard had already left the room where we were playing. The wizard, wait a second, the wizard like, or the player left the room. You're, you're, the, they're mixing like in character and out of character in that sentence. So I'm not sure what they mean. I had to admit that I did my part too, since my character's name was funny and contrasted with his serious nature. <sighs> Doesn't surprise me because you're a tiefling who wants to become a good aligned paladin and yet people wouldn't accept you because of your race. So it doesn't, it doesn't surprise me that you're doing that as well, but okay. So she just assumed that we had decided to turn the standard D&D company into a circus. Yeah, I mean, you did, it's stupid, it is a circus. I'd walk out of that too, I'd be done. I would be done with that game. I would just drop and leave. If it were in person, I'd just be like, guys, this is not my cup of tea. You guys all have fun, I'm leaving. But we've only been playing for 15 minutes. Yeah, and I can see the way this is going and I'm not interested, thank you. If we're online, I would just disconnect and peace out. <laughs> oh man. Uh, when I see what's going on in the tavern, namely that an unidentified creature first attacks one customer without warning and then takes control of a couple more, I decide to get as far away from the creature as possible and fire a crossbow bolt at it. So now you're attacking the cleric. The cleric is the one attacking people with the cloud of spores. So you're now attacking the cleric. Okay. The villagers under the cleric's control begin to approach him and give him money. This is so stupid. What spell even exists? that you release a cloud of spores and it makes NPCs under your control. This whole game is just a crap show. It is a circus, it is a circus. Next was the cleric's move. He started telling the DM that I shouldn't have attacked him at all because in these lands, the core belief is centered around people worshiping him. So the cleric now gets to write the lore for the entire world and say that people worship him. This is stupid and that I shouldn't have attacked him at all knowing that. And no, I didn't know these facts before the game started. My character wasn't from these lands and I don't think he had heard of it. The DM asked me to make a history check, which I didn't pass. Although I think I'm claiming, if I'm claiming my character didn't know it, I shouldn't have made a check, but I might be wrong. No, well, I mean, that's that's reasonable to think that, that, that I, I think that's fair. So the fight continued. The cleric again wanted me to roll dice for a constitution check. Why is the cleric asking another player to roll dice? This is stupid. If you are a player, you shouldn't be telling other players to roll dice. That is the game master's like zone. Uh, that is their like realm of asking people to roll dice and make checks, you know, for like saving throws or I, I don't know, man. This cleric is like, <laughs> this cleric needs to be done something to like 
<laughs> wow. To which I so the cleric wanted me to roll dice for a constitution check, to which I countered that I had moved a considerable distance away from his spore cloud and shouldn't have made the check. But the DM told me to roll dice anyway, just with an advantage. The, the, the DM is complicit with this. The DM thinks this is fun. The DM is like getting their jollies and, and just, oh my gosh, this is so stupid. The DM and the cleric have definitely conspired, by the way. They got together and they talked about this and they figured this out. Like, uh, there's no doubt in my mind that they were pulling some shenanigans. Like, absolutely pulling some shenanigans here and plotting together to do this tomfoolery. And that's when I realized that every time I rolled the constitution check, the cleric was trying to bend my character to his will. So now you're taking away agency. Now you're taking away agency. This whole game's a crap show at this point. It's just a crap show. It's so stupid. I think we're, I think we're at the five-year-old level right now, actually. I think 12-year-old, saying that these are 12-year-olds playing is, is a little bit too, like, you know, much. We're like five-year-olds at this point. We're like breaking all the rules. <laughs> To say that I didn't like the prospect of having my character subjugated by another player is putting it mildly. No, and you shouldn't. That's the, that's your your character. That's your agency. You should be able to. D d I voiced my displeasure outside of the character to the DM, to which the cleric replied that it wasn't really mind control because people under the influence of his spores themselves want to honor him, and the fact that they started car carrying their money to him is of their own free will because of their faith in him. Your, your cleric's a moron. The cleric is an idiot. He's an idiot. He's a moron. Like they're gonna they're gonna come up with any sort of stupid tomfoolery exclusives to justify their crappy behavior, and that's what it is. It's horse crappy behavior. You should just leave that game and never go back. These are your friends. These are your friends. Oh my gosh. Oh, I don't want enemies like this. And these are your friends. To this, I counter that if my character suddenly lost faith in his deity and started honoring the cleric's character, it would completely kill my whole idea of wanting him to become a paladin. The cleric suggested that I become a paladin who would worship him. I'll admit unnecessary details, but the DM tried to keep our company by splitting us up for a while. Okay, that doesn't make sense to me, but okay. The wizard and I went shopping. Yeah, yeah, I mean, usually shopping sucks and is the least interesting part of any game. But after this, like, yes, please, let's go shopping. That shopping is a godsend after having to deal with this type of horse crap. Wow, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> oh my gosh, this cleric is out of control. The wizard and I went shopping while the cleric went to the temple where he used spores to not subdue a small crowd. So we had to guard the trade caravan as a quest. Small detail, the cleric wanted to take a couple of his minions with him, but the DM didn't allow it, apparently because the wizard started looking at the exit again. Dude, and the crazy thing is, check this out. This is the crazy thing. If you go to the top, like, the DM, the wizard, the wizard is the dungeon master's girlfriend. Remember the context. The wizard player is the dungeon master's girlfriend, and she is considering leaving this game. This game is such a crap show that the dungeon master's own girlfriend is about to nope out and leave. That's what a crap show this game is. Twice now they've mentioned how the TM's girlfriend is, is like gonna leave. Wow. It ended when I tried to talk to the cleric while traveling and convince him not to brainwash my character with his spores. This is so stupid. You shouldn't even have this conversation. Just leave the game, dude. He refused and said he would keep trying to convert my character and that I didn't realize we'd get a lot of bonuses if he did. Kind of by design, if we were brainwashed with spores, we would have some bonuses in the game. But the argument that it was more important to me, my character's story, than increasing a couple numbers on my character sheet didn't convince him. During this, so this, this, char this player has no respect for the other player. No respect at all. Like, they don't care that for the fact that you want to roleplay your character. They just are like, no, I'm gonna make my spores convert you. I'm just gonna convert you with my spores and make you my servant. That is such, that is that is a toxic, nasty, horrible player. Like, that person is, a, is not a nice human being, at least in the context of this game. That's some horse crappery. During this argument, the wizard left us again, which was the end of our D&D campaign. <laughs> so the D, D campaign ends when the dungeon master's own girlfriend is like, nope, I'm done. Goodbye. This game right here is horse crappery and I'm walking out the door. You all have a nice day. Dungeon master boyfriend, I'll call you. Don't call me. I'll call you. 
and then she nopes out. That is a great way to end it, man. <laughs> The next day I talked to the wizard about the game and by all accounts, the whole thing with the spores that were supposed to brainwash our characters and make them worship the cleric's character was fully approved by the DM. Yeah, and that's what I've been telling you from the very beginning of the story that it sounds like the dungeon master and the cleric were behind the screen talking and finagling things together because they both thought it was gonna be really cool. This is gonna be awesome. <laughs> it was only her assumption um, but it seems to be true because first of all, the DM did not prevent the cleric from using spores in our characters. And secondly, the cleric could not give our characters in-game bonuses without the DM's consent. Now, well, now the big question is maybe I am the butthole. No, unless you're misrepresenting the facts of the story, you are not the butthole. Like, like <laughs> the cleric and the dungeon master are idiots and you should never play another game with them ever again. Wait until they get to be like 20 years old or something because they sound like they're five. Give them about 15 years to mature and then maybe try a game with them again.